Five, they roll me off. Yeah, they thought I would die. They tried to bury me, bury me while I was alive. They never know purpose. Can I die? They thought I was hopeless, but I survived. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Purpose can die. Purpose can die. Purpose can die. Purpose can die. Mistreated and wounded. I got frustrated. You thought I'd die. But I am anointed. Yes, 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 yes. You thought I would die, but I am anointed. Yes, you know that purpose cannot die. Once there is purpose on your life, it cannot die. You're listening to the sound of Trey Taylor out of Jamaica. The song says, Purpose Can't Die. This morning, I want to say welcome to all our listeners, welcome to all our viewers from across the nations of the world that has joined me this morning. I'm your host, Odette Thompson. You're tuned into HGG Radio, and we are about to go live with our segment, Balancing on Purpose. And this morning, we have a very special guest coming on, and he's going to be talking about how he juggles all the things that he has to do. We're going to be talking to Sir Des Moines Nash this morning on balancing on purpose. You know that uh, when we say on purpose, it means that you have to deliberately do it. You're deliberately doing. You're intentional in what you are doing. And, you know, when we say balance, it means that you're having all of the parts and the elements in your life properly and effectively arranged. And so we are going to be talking to Sir Nash this morning on Balancing on Purpose. I see your listeners jumping on to Facebook and to YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is The Morning Flow, and we're about to go live with our segment, Balancing on Purpose, where we're going to be talking to a young man that is being deliberate, being intentional with how he lives his life. You know, when you have purpose on your life, you cannot waste time. When you have purpose on your life, you don't, you don't want to throw it away. You want to make sure that all the gifts that you're given, you put them to use because you don't want... When the master comes back, he said, you know, you were not a good steward. So we want to, we want, good morning to you, Dr. Stephanie, out of Jamaica. You have hopped on. So good morning. Good morning to you. Oh, good morning. It's so wonderful to see you on already, Dr. Stephanie. It's good having you here with us this morning. Again, good morning to all our listeners. Good morning to all our viewers that has, that have joined us on Facebook and on YouTube. For all our listeners that are still on the radio side of things, if you'd love to see the interview live, you can jump onto Facebook. Uh, you can jump onto my Facebook page, Odette Thompson, O-D-E-T-H Thompson. You can jump onto my page. You can also jump onto the page of Roshane Douglas on Facebook. You can do the same for YouTube. And it is Odette Thompson again on YouTube. That's O-D-E-T-H-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. You can jump onto either of those platforms if you'd love to see uh, the interview live here on Balancing on Purpose. Uh, so this morning we have with us uh, uh, Sir Des Moines Nash. Uh, and he's a young man that is on purpose. He's a young man that is making sure that he accomplishes uh, what God has in store for him, right? So, all right, I'm just giving everybody enough time to jump on, giving everyone enough time to jump on. I'm watching you jumping on. Awesome, awesome. Run and tell your neighbor, run and tell your friends that balancing on purpose is on. 
I've gotten so many feedback from our listeners and from our viewers that they say to me that, you know what, whenever you come on with that program, Balancing on Purpose, I get so many good nuggets. I get so many good um, um, information in terms of how I should live my life purposefully. And so I want you to jump on and go and tell someone that we are on this morning with Balancing on Purpose. All right. So there you go, folks. We have Sir Nash with us this morning, and this is the face behind the name, the face behind the name. Welcome to you, Sir Nash. Welcome, um, Welcome Lady Auditorio. I am good. I am good. How are you doing over there? In I think you're in Cayman, right? Yes, I'm in the Cayman Islands. Nice you're weather, in... good sunshine, not like you in cold, cold Canada. Ah, oh, I tell you. <laughs> I tell you the other day when I spoke to you and um you indicated what you were having for lunch. Can I tell you? I'm envious of the food when you tell me what you when you told what you're eating. Now you're telling me about the good weather. This is just not right. This is just not right. We need to Certainly. share. We need to share. All right. So I want to say again, welcome to everybody that's joined us here on HGG Radio. I am Odette Thompson, the host for The Morning Flow. Our segment this morning is Balancing on Purpose. And our very special guest this morning is uh, Demoy Nash. And he's presently joining us from the Cayman Islands. So we're going to be talking to him a little bit. And we're going to just be talking to him about how he balances the multiple hats that he wears. All right. So the little that I know. All right. So I know that most of the time when I have someone on here, you all say, oh, it's somebody that you know from long time. But all right, so guess what? I do not know him personally, but guess what? I've been watching his life. And so this is, you see, when you live out loud, people watch and people admire, right? And people see that you're juggling. And I'm sure that there's a lot of things that, that are behind the scenes that he's juggling that we're not even aware of. But the things that I see on social media, I can tell you that he's juggling a lot. All right, so Demoy is a father. He is a JP, he is a author, he's a motivational speaker, he's a project manager, practitioner, right? All right, and I know you're going to tell us some more about all of the other hats that you wear. Those are the things that I saw, and I that's a little bit of introduction that I'm going to give. I'm going to allow you to let our listeners and our viewers know who Demoy Nash is. Go ahead. Thank you, Lady Odette. Um, hmm. Quite a bit you mentioned there. First, I'd like to say that I am a Christian first. I, I pride myself as a, as a servant of the, the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm proud to be a father. It's something that I celebrate. I try to do the best I can under the circumstance that is provided to me. Um, I am a Senior Policy Advisor in the Cayman Islands Government with responsibility for the agricultural portfolio. So I coordinate all the activities within the portfolio. And, and, and when I say all, it, it's, it's inclusive of a lot of things. Um, from dealing with direction to operation, aliasing with the, the different lobbies that are, you know, trying to get the ears of the persons in direction, speaking of those at the Minister, minister, ministerial level, etc. So that in itself is my full time job, and it comes with a lot. Outside of that, I am a adjunct lecturer at the University College of the Cayman Islands, where I lecture um, biology. I am also a change management practitioner, trained, so trained to deal with the change process and to manage persons. You know, as you introduce change to an organization. I am a, a member of the Association of Project Management, which is a global movement of project managers. So I'm a qualified project manager at, and I, by virtue of that, I'd have to demonstrate years of practicing project management and obtaining necessary qualifications. I am a JP, yes, of the island of Jamaica. And by extension, I'm also a mediator, certified mediator. And I do counseling, mostly at a referral level. And this is very new. 
I am an executive director for Grace Beyond Borders Fellowship, which is a registered nonprofit organization within the Cayman Islands. Um, so I think that kind of summed up. And I'm a, and I'm a good son. <laughs> yes, you know, parents come with a lot to juggle parent life, family life as well. Okay, awesome. I think you did you mention an author? author? I did mention I was an author. Yes, okay. so I have my of my book here, the second book, Failure is Not Final, which I've wrote extensively about purpose as well. And I wrote another the first book was Overcoming Our Giants. And this one, Failure is Not Final, which is most recent, which I published last year. And I have an audio version of this book to be released shortly. It is complete, it's just to publish. And I am going to be writing shortly on divorce and remarriage, which is a very topical issue for years within the church setup. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is I was I was actually writing. <laughs> <laughs> I've written down the list of, of things that you do and I had to stop because there are so many. All right. So folks, you you heard it right here, straight from the horse's mouth, how many hats he wears. And um, you know, he seems so calm and peaceful. So it seems as if he's wearing them quite well. All right. So I wanna thank you for coming on this morning, you know, and as I said, it's balancing on purpose. It is where you know, a lot of persons, when I initially had um, talked to them about the segment, they didn't quite get it, you know, but it's the word play you're balancing and you're doing it on purpose. You're intentionally doing it one, but it is a purposeful uh, uh, a regime that you are undertaking. All right. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about a number of things, actually, you know, we want to get you get to know you a little bit better and, um, you mentioned, the first thing that you mentioned is that you are a child of God. And I absolutely love that. That That's the first thing that you you indicated, you know, and that is to know that you are a kingdom citizen first and foremost. With all of the accolades, you are a kingdom citizen. What inspires you? What inspires me? Um, human service. And knowing that the way I connect to God is by treating my fellow men as he treats me. So to all my, all the things I do, they're people related. And um, it gives me pleasure to serve others. And whilst, whilst I didn't mention that I'm a preacher and a motivational speaker, it's linked to this very first one I mentioned being a child of God, because all of that comes as an offshoot of that at first one I, I mentioned. Okay. All right. I was listening for more. <laughs> I was listening <laughs> for more because I'm... Well, that, that, that's the primary motivation when I get up in the morning. It's, it's what can I do? I have recently changed how I function in the morning. So now I put in a hours, a one a hour walk every morning and I you know, walk and meditate and I look at my day and to see how can I, you know, impact others by serving the lord so for me service to the lord is service to my fellow men and is doing it as i'm doing it unto christ and you know and it's 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 a it's a everyday work it's not something that i have mastered perf um to perfection but even in the midst of failure there is a a desire to continue to to please him Okay, awesome, awesome service, and that is essential. A lot of persons, are, um, they think that ministry, ministering, they they want to be served, but the essence of it is to be a servant first and foremost. And I'm seeing someone logging on here on YouTube, and they're they're indicating. I'm thinking that this is somebody that knows you, and they're talking about your character. And um, it speaks volumes that we're going to have listeners jumping on now and they're going to be talking about how you are. You indicated that your main focus is service. And that also is very, very good. As a kingdom citizen, that's the first thing that we need to recognize that we were called to serve. We were called to serve. It is not a you do what I say and you go where I'm telling you to go. You know, most of the times leaders 
um, with, with, that do not have the heart of the Lord. That's what they, they see, the limelight. They see everything else aside from service. And I'm loving that you're indicating that service is what inspires you. All right, so we're talking about purpose this morning. And you indicated a number of things that you have been doing um, secularly and on um, Christendom, in, on the side of Christendom. All right, so what advice would you give to someone that is trying to find their purpose? The, um, I would say to them, very important is to understand what is purpose. If for me, it took a long journey in finding out what is it. And if you can clearly define it, then you can pursue it. I think the Bible sets out the clear plan for purpose. When God made man, he didn't left his creative being not knowing what his purpose. So right after he created man, he outlined there in the manuscript what I call purpose tools. And, and, and this is that we must be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, and that we should subdue, right? And if we can understand then that from my perspective, which I've clearly articulated in, 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 in the book, Failure is Not Final, that purpose, purpose is a composite of purpose tools. And if you utilize these tools at any particular thing, you will achieve purpose. I know somebody's looking for me to say that you were born to be a specific thing, but you can be so much. For example, I wear multiple hats. Like last night, I was in on a, on a live in Turks and Capes, that school, being a motivational speaker. This morning, I was doing my primary work. Today, it's on this platform. And, and this is just so much in one, reaching and doing different things, and is applying the purpose tool. Am I being fruitful? And that's just not linked to procreation. But am, am I able for what comes in my possession to increase it, to multiply it? Am I having dominion over what I'm doing? Am I subduing the things that comes in the threats? Am, am I mitigating the threats that comes at me? And how am I seizing opportunities? And how am I growing and developing self at the same time? You see, if we... If we use these purpose tools well, at, it could be a janitor, it could be a, a, a utility worker, it could be a, a home technician, it could be a minister of religion, it could be a minister of parliament, whatever it is, you will be successful. You'd have achieved purpose rather than seeking that one thing that you believe you were born to do and not achieving it because you know you are frustrated that things are not going your way and you're not seeing an outcome. But what you heard, whatever comes in your way at any particular time, do it. Very importantly, a part of purpose that we miss also is what I refer to as um, capacity. So if we know this fellow in the Bible called um, Jabez, when Jabez prayed, Jabez didn't come to pray to God asking for things. He asked for expansion. He asked for capacity. Um, development, um, storage increase, because he knows within him lies purpose seeds and he has purpose tools. So when he begins to cultivate, there's going to be increase. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to have dominion. I'm going to subdue. But do I have the capacity to store all that will be coming into my space? Because if not, they will be lost. And so from, a, from an agriculturist that, that I am standpoint, one of the things that we realize in, 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 in farming, most of the things are lost at the post-harvest stage. You cultivate the soil, you grow the crop, you harvest it, but you have not made provision for post-harvest. And so many things are lost from you harvest to market, to storage, that sort of thing. So if you can build out capacity, you will be purposeful. You will achieve purpose, your purpose in the earth. You'll be impactful. You'll be effective. Oh my goodness, I could sit and listen to you all day. 
I could sit and listen to you all day. This is awesome. You know, I'm and I'm loving the fact that you've taken that scripture from a different point of view. Because most persons, when they hear um, to be fruitful and multiply, you know, they're talking about um, uh, the physical part of it where you're going to um, have, have children. Have children, you know. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that you've taken it to this point and, and even looking at... Uh, not even just focused on one area of 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 um expertise but looking at all you know that god has allowed you to do everything that he's placed in your hands and the capacity do you have the capacity i love that part you know when we we often refer to the prayer of jabez and like oh lord uh, bless me enlarge my territory you know we we often refer to it but do we really really know what it means to have our capacity enlarged that when 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 we're doing what we're supposed to do we're able to function mm -hmm. you know and function properly so All right, it's, it's so like it's like we're praying we're praying for a job and we are not we don't have the qualifications for the job we don't have the discipline that when we get the job the right attitude to be successful to be a team player, you know, to relate to the different persons we'll come in contact with. You don't have the capacity. So if you get the job, you will you will lose it, you know, mm -hmm. and that will affect you overall. So that's why at times God don't give us because we don't have the capacity to treat it what he gives us. All right. Properly. Awesome. Awesome. Folks, you are hearing it here on uh, Balancing on Purpose. We have our special guest this morning. The Moy Nash out of the Cayman Islands. And we're talking about balancing on purpose. And we're looking at, you know, how do you, ah, it's, all right, I'm seeing persons jumping on on Facebook and they're saying, yes, very true, very true. Welcome to you, Lady Williams. Welcome to you. So good to have you here with us this morning. And I see Minister David Lynch also jumping on. Welcome to you, Sir David. It's good to have you on with us this morning. I see um, Marcella out of, I uh, think, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Welcome to you this morning. I want you to go ahead and share this link. Share the live interview this morning because we're having a talk with Demoy and he is giving us some insightful thoughts on balancing on purpose. All right, so moving right along, you've talked about um, what advice you'd give to someone who is looking for purpose and uh, you know what inspires you all right uh we i want i'm, I'm gonna i want to touch on the book but i'm gonna wait a little while right i have a, sure. a few questions to ask you all right so looking back over your life all right looking back over your life and um everything that you've accomplished what is your biggest accomplishment hmm. <laughs> that's uh, that's a that's a big one. Um, I would say my greatest accomplishment is to be a child of God, despite all that has happened. To you know, my life I've taken several twists. I was saying to somebody last night that when I left for boarding school at sixteen, I have not returned home since that, except for about three weeks for holiday. And you can imagine a, a seventeen-year-old out there 16 turning 17 i would have made many mistakes i'd have failed many times um and 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 the fact is there are times that i let go but he held me and so my praise is to his glory for holding me at the times when i never want to stay you know, because might I might have been confused. I might have been, I, God knows where my mind have gone, a different phase in responding to the different things that have, life has thrown at me. But today I can say, despite all of that, my faith in, in him remains strong as a bull. And his hand on me has not diminished. And his hold on me is still potent. And I give God thanks that my greatest accomplishment is being a child of God because that opens up every other door. It opened the door of education. I say to people, I'm not the, 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 the brightest, I'm not the smartest, yet I'm in a post where it is unique because I'm the only older of it and there's no similar role to that within the portfolio of agriculture, managing an entire 
food security, um, food and nutrition security policy for an island and all that comes with that. No, that for me, whether it's being a good father, whether it's being a good friend, whether it's being a good motivational speaker and all of the things that I do, it comes from the source. And that source is being a Christian, being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that holds everything. He holds everything together. Is the glue for me. Is the glue. My greatest accomplishment. Without that, I would have been nothing. And all I would have achieved outside of him would what Paul said, I count, but, but don't. Nothing at all. So that's a simple way to put it. I see why you're a motivational speaker. <laughs> I see why you're a motivational speaker. You know, I'm listening to you and I'm loving the fact that you're keeping the main thing the main thing. Oftentimes we will uh we will get to a point in our life and we will we'll say, Oh, my biggest accomplishment is this or my biggest accomplishment is that. But the fact that you have remained true to who you are. And I think that that is why God has kept you grounded. That is why he has kept you um, focused because he trusts you, because he has proven you through all of the ups, all of the downs, everything that you have gone through. He, he, he recognizes that you are there for the real reasons, you know, the real reasons, not for the facade, not for what people think that it, uh, what is happening, but you're there for the real reason. And that, you know, the scripture says when you um, seek first the kingdom of God, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. And I love the fact that you've made the main thing, the main thing, and that is to keep the focus on God, not to put it on anything else, not to put it on any of the accolades, all of the accomplishments that you have had over the years. You've not even focused on any of that, but you remember that if it had not been for him, you wouldn't be where you are. And folks, you have to, you know, when we are walking this walk, we have to remember that he will take us to some heights. But guess what? It is your integrity and your character that will keep you there. It's your integrity and your character that will keep you there. And so keep the main thing, the main thing. That is awesome. All right. So question, what do you wish you had known when you had started out, based on where you are now, is there something that you wish you had known back then that you now know? Huh. I, maybe I wouldn't say something, but I wish where my, my, and if I say it this way, I might start to think that I might have regrets. And I don't, I have lived life without any regrets. I have acknowledge all my my failures all my successes and i would not want to be anywhere else but where i'm at now but if i should really say um i would love to have the mind where i'm at now i'd say about 2023 um i got married very young i've had a failed marriage i'm divorced and i believe if if i was at this mindset I might have worked marriage better. I might have um, had a different outcome, that sort of a thing. So, um, to I would I would give posit that that answer. But I have no regrets. I am loving all if the the, the the despite the critics and they'll be there and the naysayers and the people who don't hear and suppose, you know, and the people that um might get a little int an intel but you know what i love is that god has all the information and yet he loves me and and people with supposition will will berate me and all of that believe me sister odette reverend odette it was needed to make me into what i am now i can tell you if it had not been for the hardship if it hadn't been for my naivety back then, my lack of knowledge in certain things, I would not have walked the route that God has taken me through to where I'm at now. So I, I've, I've, I've loved what I've happened so far. And I'm loving where I'm at. You know, that in of itself speaks of maturity. It does. 
Because oftentimes when this question is asked, you know, persons say, you know, I do this different. I wish I had done this. I wish I had known this. But the fact that you have embraced where you are now. Embrace the process. (laughs) Embrace the process. It is necessary. Embrace the process because the person that you are now, if you had not gone through all of what you had gone through, you would not be this person now, Mm -hmm. you know? So if if, if Joseph wasn't sold, if he wasn't, you know, thrown in the pit, party for prison, he would not have been there. So I've learned to know that my life is uniquely different from everybody else. And whilst I had mentors, I wanted to be like them. I've had to learn that, listen to me, your path is totally different. People might not understand it is a different shoe. It's a different mile you're, you're walking. And you have to just stay true to the course and trust God and just lock out the noise and keep focus. I love it. I can relate to it. Oftentimes, um, you know, you grow up in church, you grow up, you grow up around all of these people and um, things will happen. Everybody's journey is different. And, you know, sometimes when I was younger, I would look at some of my friends and I think, why my life did not go that way? You know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, and you look at how theirs turned out. But guess what? My life is unique to me. It's unique to me. And so the persons that I can now speak to, I can speak to them from a, a position of experience, right? Definitely. And if I had not had all of those things happen to me, I would not have been able to talk to the persons that I'm talking to now to say, hey, I totally get it. I understand what you're talking about. I, I've been there, done that, you know? And, and I'm not um, taking away from persons who have had an ideal Christian walk. I'm not taking away from that. No, but I'm just saying that everyone's journey is unique to them. Mm-hmm. And have have I, anyone had an ideal walk? Because oh. so many times we are fooled by appearances, you know, but all of us have, have, have our fiery furnace, you know, all of us, we are processed. You can't have the product without the process. And many times people hide the process because we don't get to walk in a, in a grace factory and see mm-hmm. how the ketchup is processed. We just see the ketchup on the shelf and we admire the label and mm-hmm. the packaging. But the truth is, if you step in their processing plant and see what is happening, you realize it's a very ugly process. Oh that my. Covering up, you know? But we just get to see when they come out and see the label. One of the things that I am doing and dedicating the rest of my life to do is to make myself vulnerable and to expose what is happening in the processing plant to help others because the labeling is just to sell something it's just an advertisement to cover up everything that is happening you know and people don't see that some way in the mix that you are making the product it, it, you know you have to dump it you have to dump some stuff you have to recalibrate you have to reconfigure some the machine broke down you know the assembly line you have to to reconfigure it you know you have to change the recipe people don't see that you know but these are the things that i am dedicating to tell about mark you people might berate you and say all of whatever they did it to christ they did it to christ he just did a miracle for the people and they were concerned not about the miracle he did but by what power he used to do it you know Mm -hmm. so we just have to, 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 to be. I, I like the fact that you touched on the facade. I like the, the fact that you touched on the facade. I remember, um, all right, so I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was brought up in church, grew up on the church mm-hmm. bench, but I left. I left. I left. I have two children, right? And I came back. And I remember, I remember when I came back to church, I, I, I remember, um, I would testify and I would talk about, you know, saints, I'm so glad to be back in church. I'm so glad, not church. I'm so glad to mm-hmm. be back with the Lord. And I'm talking about if it had not been for the Lord. And, and, and I would testify from time to time. I would testify of the fact that I had backslidden. Somebody mm-hmm. came to me, said, I must stop it. You know, you know, the truth, the other day, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be con- controversial, but in my times of, 
being alone and really thinking. I think a lot. And you said backsliding and coming back to church. You said some right stuff. Because have you ever left God? Where can you go to leave him? Mm. Can he ever leave you? Because he said, I am with you even to the ends of the world. I will not leave you. So yes, we might leave the community, the church community, the community that we have been a part of. And it's by mistakes we have made. Either us or they have decided to part you know, to, to part ways. Mm -hmm. But yet still, if we are truthful, God has never left us. Never His did. His presence has never left us. We, we, we felt him all along the path, you know? So, you know, I, I just had to put that in. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, you never did. And, you know, I, I look at it and I'm, I'm grateful for my journey. And I'm, I'm happy listening to you and 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 um hearing you say the same thing that your journey has made you into who you are now right you can speak to persons that have been going through difficulties their walk have been difficult because you can speak to them from a position of experience right and and i love that um i want to ask you um you you um you've been Highlighting the fact that you've been keeping the main thing, the main thing. You are a kingdom citizen, first and foremost. It is because of God where you are now. He's the glue that has kept you. All right. So many persons believe that ministry is on a Sunday. Right. They see mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. um, they see us. They, they, they come. You might be preaching a word or you might be talking on a Sunday or whatever you're doing on the Sunday. Let us use the Sunday. Right. So that is the day that they come out and they, you know, everybody comes together and they're thinking, OK, Monday till Saturday. There's no ministry going on. I want you to talk to me a little bit more about um, that, that, um, that viewpoint is ministry only on a Sunday. This is something that I've dealt with um, in a comprehensive manner in, in failure is not final because I believe the view in of itself that ministry is a thing or it's on a day or it is within the framework of an assembly a religious movement in that enough in and of itself is a failure and is very flawed and what it what it what it does then it limits you and towards your ability to become everything that god has called you to be and you kind of ring fence yourself you kind of establish this little permit and you, you don't go out so for example you must have heard it when you're growing up in church they'll tell you if you're engaging in extracurriculum activity or or, or, or or whatever they'll say only what is done for christ will last as to say pay less attention to your secular work pay less attention to education because at the end of the day that will not last and while there's some element of it that is true what we must understand that your greatest ministry is your life. So when we talk about Jesus, we say the Christ life, the life he lived. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. And so he, 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 there wasn't that specific day when he said, oh, I'm going to do ministry. And then tomorrow I'm going to do me. You have to understand that you, you are ministry. The way you care and treat yourself, treat others, the way you go to work, the way you treat you. You see your true boss as God. When I come to work, I am not working for the Cayman Islands government primarily. I'm primarily working for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that influence and impact everything else I do. So I, that means I don't watch the clock. But yet I'll come early to respect the hours I'm given. But I will go above and beyond to ensure what I do represent kingdom. It has the excellence it has that um level of mastery and proficiency depicting that my competence is from somewhere else rather than just school it comes from heaven so when somebody look at your body of work that you do they must say wow because they know this is not normal it represents that you are the child of an extraordinary god so if i'm driving i am in ministry so i can stop and let somebody cross the road because for me it's ministry. I can pick up somebody on the road in my car because I have empty seats that I can carry somebody. 
if I'm buying food and somebody is in the, beside me, I can share that or I can buy them something. That's ministry. If I am in if I'm in the bank line, I can I cannot get upset when somebody bore. You know, we call Jamaica bore you or pass me. You know, so everything, oh can I? I'm talking on the phone. And as I said, I'm not speaking from the perspective of a perfectionist or an idealist, but that is something that I endeavor to practice, even though I have failed many times at the attempt to do this. But it still remains my resolve that this is true ministry. It's everything you do, everywhere you go, um, you're doing it as unto God. You know, how he, how he would want you to do it. And it's not just preaching. One of the things, Lady Odette, and I must point it out, I point out in, in my book as well, in church, that the pulpit is not the most sacred place. It's the most privileged place. Because only one and only one person get to go in there at a time. And when you look even at a church roster, how many persons within the congregation are utilized for the year? And, and in that in of itself can give rise to inferiority complex, low self-worth, people lack of value on themselves, valuing themselves justly because they are never worthy to be used. So you've got to see then that your worth, your value, your ministry, your service is beyond this. It is when I go to work and nobody sees me at all, you know, I'm doing it as unto God. You know, when I'm buying, when I'm, when I'm out of the video light, when no Facebook is, is on, live is on, I'm still doing, you know, God. That's, you know, that's all about it, you know. I absolutely love what you just said. And the word that you used, excellence. A lot of persons don't recognize that it is your daily walk. It's your daily talk. It's everything that you do outside of the sanctuary. It is, you know, persons, you put on your, your clothes on a Sunday and I'm going to go to church and I'm, you know, this is, this is where they show their best selves. And um, Monday to Saturday, they're a different individual, totally different. Lady Odette. All right, I think we just lost his video. All right. Um, you know, so just to keep it going until he jumps back on. Um, all right. Yes. Go on. I, I was saying that, you know, in my own little time of thinking, you know, I've had to come to the to the realization that how I'm and I'm not as a, a, a psychologist or a or a psychiatrist, but nor a behavior, behavior, behavior is, you know, studying behavior. But just from my little two cents, when we get people into a mode where they are living one life on a Sunday and one life on a Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday night different and all of that, and then they gear up for our different conventions and then gone back to normal living, it predisposes schizophrenia and bipolar-like behavior because they have to be being this and being that and and while they're doing it consistently they become different persons mm -hmm. versions of themselves you know that is so true performers performers <laughs> it's true it's yes. true and i know a lot of persons don't like when i when i say certain things you know but it is what it is and I, you know what, folks, I grew up in the church, so I can talk about it if I want to talk about it because I grew up there. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not it, anything that I say. It is factual. It's not an opinion. It is factual. And, you know, the scripture that I use to guide how I live now is actually the book of Daniel. And we oftentimes look at Daniel and we don't even look at how great this man was. He had an excellent absolutely excellent spirit if we recognize that daniel was taken from uh israel taken into babylon a brand new place but guess what he went into this land and he did not one forget who he was didn't forget who he was but guess what he performed his duties excellently to the point where nebuchadnezzar had him in a high regard 
not only that, if we recognize that after Nebuchadnezzar, we had the Medes and the Persians, he was still in power. He was still mm -hmm. holding office. You, right? You know, and, and, and Lady Odette, might I had that in all that Daniel became, let us not forget all the, the atrocities that were done to him, changing off his name and giving him a pig, pagan name, castrating him, mm -hmm. his man would, making him into a eunuch, destroying the, the hope of ever becoming a father. You know, so it's basically making him less than a man. Mm -hmm. And all of that, yet still, he maintained excellence. Look at that. In yeah. all of that, I love it. In all of that, he maintained an excellent spirit to the point. You know what I love when they had thrown him in the den of lions and um, the king, because of how this man worked, just because of how he worked, you know, the king admired him to the point where the king was so, so um, unhappy when he realized what he had done. It's like, oh my God, not Daniel, not this one. You know, I'm sure he wouldn't behave the way he did if it was somebody else. You know, and then it, I love the fact that the king went on fast in the night. I don't want to eat anything. I don't want to hear any music. And he ran to the den the very first thing in the morning. And you know what he said? He said, Daniel did your God because he know that Daniel, there's a God that Daniel served. Why? Because he showed it in his everyday walk. He showed it in his everyday talk. He was a minister in the court. Yes, but he still, he still uh, uh, came out as a minister of God, the God of Israel, to the point where the king could say, did your God deliver you? Mm -hmm. And I just, and that is every time I think about operating and I know, I know that um, naturally I operate a certain way, which is not far from that, you know, but I add on this particular scripture to say in everything that I'm doing, I want to do it with an excellent spirit. I want you to know that when I go to work, how you see me at work, that's how I operate at church. Well, I may not be speaking in tongues at work, but... <laughs> but you know how I am at work is how I am at, at, at church, how I am on the road. And most persons who know me, they can tell that, you know, the same audit that you see here is the same audit that you're going to see somewhere else. You know, I'm, I, it's not, I, I you're, was, not it, you're not bipolar. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 you don't no, have no. Multiple personalities. No, 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 no. It's the same, same audit, same, same on it. You know, and 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 we oftentimes forget that we we it, it, you know what? I pray that we all get to that stage where we recognize that this is not a performance. You don't act one way, and you know, truth be told, when you look at it, when you look at um how you live at home, and you look and you see persons, their families are not saved, and it's because of how they live at home. You know, that is it. How they how they behave. Mm -hmm. you know. It is how they behave. I can tell you, my children look at me and they tell me, <laughs> they tell me that they say, like, my, 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 I remember when I was um in Jamaica, my older daughter, she said to me, she said, mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a Christian just like you. But <laughs> when I say this part, some person is not going to like this part, but it's what she said as a child. She said to me, mommy, I want to be a Christian just like you, but I'm not going to go to your church. <laughs> Uh, she said, she said, I'm not going to go to your church because I can't wear pants at your church. Suppress, like, suppressive, you know, and we believe that suppression is righteousness. And I'll never forget that she said that to me. She wants to be a Christian like me, but she's not going to go there because, no, she wants to do, you know. But, you know, it is us living a life that shows Christ in everything that we do. And I absolutely love it. All right, so I have some more questions, but before we do that, I want you to touch on your book. I recognize that we have quite a few persons watching on Facebook, quite a few persons on YouTube, and let me see from the radio side. Okay, we still have Germany, um, we have Germany, we have Jamaica, we have Canada, and the United States still tuned on the radio side of things. And I want you to touch on your book. Um, mm -hmm. In short, just talk to us about your book because I intend on getting the book. I've seen, I've seen the promos and I intend on getting the book. Talk to us a little bit about the book. 
Yes, so um, so if persons look at the screen, they'll see failure is not final, which is motivational truths and strategies to cultivate success. So at one of my, as I said, one of my core tasks is to be a, is a policy advisor. So you know to string together strategies and policies daily. That's what I do. So how is it, you know, from a person who has failed and um, in many different situations and circumstances and faulty? The question was, how can I put together a document that can help person to understand their purpose, to rightly understand what is success, to appreciate what is failure? Because a lot of what we call failures, I've put there that they are purpose seeds. They are going to get you to your purpose. They are like fertility tools. They are like fertilizers. So the book have a number of chapters, and it uses various um persons who have failed and look at, at their lives and look at how God has used their story, used their um to to get them to where he wants and to get glory out of their lives. I've made myself vulnerable. I've talked about my failures. I've put forward um you know strategies how persons can overcome failure. I've looked at preparation for, for, for marriage. My favorite chapter I think is living while limping is to is to is just to level the playing field that everybody have a limp regardless of of who you are where you are how you talk or you look we all have failed we all have a struggle we all have a have a, have a disability something that we struggle with but i have used um the the, the different persons there in fact is is the life of jacob and i've used jacob and i've used Mephibosheth and I've used Paul and I've said that some of the limbs is a result is consequential a result of what we do some of it is imposed you know and some of it is God sanctioned you know but regardless of what it is I have shown how clear parts or we can overcome these the book for me was a source of healing after going through a very dark phase in my life and does help me to heal and to recover well. It was a coping mechanism. It was something that I was able to pour everything in me. But then God gave me the wisdom to take the manuscript and to give to people who were not who did not experience what I had experienced to ensure the book would not be tainted with bitterness. It would not be tainted with just what I wanted to be there. But they could extract the, the juice and leave the trash, you know, and, and make it something that is palatable, um, that is impactful and effective as a tool to help persons to become successful in whatever they do. So I urge you, I urge persons to um to, to get it. There at the back of it, there is a guide, a list of um what I call power nuggets. You know um, that 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 supplements you can take one daily, and that will help you. It, it it's across the, the the month, and 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 it will help you greatly. Um, so I urge you. It's on um, Amazon. It's on Kindle. Um, the handle is um, Demo Nash, and you can still access it at some bookstores within Jamaica, and if you're in the Cayman Islands. So if you want a copy, just inbox me on Instagram, Demoy Nash, or um, Demoy Nash on Facebook Messenger. And um, I, I'll get a copy. I can direct you exactly to where a copy is, to where you are. And, and despite where you are, you can access it. Somebody call me from, uh, send me a picture from Dublin in Ireland, reading their book. Persons have called me from when I looked at where the purchases have come, have, you know, came from. Persons in England, all over the place, persons have accessed the book from. So where you are is no, um, you know, excuse not to get one. And for me, it's not an income generating tool because my investment in getting the manuscript has been so much more than even what I've um, recovered thus far. But for me, it is sharing in a way to let persons know, you know, God is not true with you. If he began the work in you, he's going to finish it in a flourishing manner, you know. So go and go ahead and grab your 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 cover and your, your book 
and look forward to other things that I'll be putting out in the near future. Okay, awesome. Folks, you heard it here. Uh, failure is not final. And I want you to go ahead and jump on um, Amazon or connect with um, Demoy on his social media. He'll be able to um, direct you to how to get the book. Um, and I, 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 I say, I've been saying it privately. No, I say it publicly. So, you know, I have to do it because I, I had intention of getting the book from a long time ago because I've been watching. <laughs> I've been mm -hmm. watching. So, and the right. audio version, the audio version is is coming out shortly. Okay, you great. Know, I'm still I'm trying to tie down somewhere to get it. So if anybody listening and is a pro at getting audio book on Amazon, hit me mm -hmm. up. All right. So you heard that, folks. If there's anyone out there who is able to assist in getting this book um, done audibly, um, connect with Sir Nash. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's it's, it's what done. Audio, I have the audio version already. It's done. It's just to oh. get it up. So it's done. It's ready. It's just to move it now from from off my computer onto Amazon. Oh, OK. You know, I know a lady. Yes, man. Send the lady to me. <laughs> I know a lady. I know a lady. I know a lady. All right. I am going to connect with her. All right. So awesome. So, folks, I want you to jump and get the book. Get the book. Failure is not final. Failure is not final. We're, I'm looking forward to reading it. And when I do read it, I'm going to come back here and tell you all about this book. All right. So I did indicate that we have um, some more questions. All right. Not just two more questions. What are you not good at? Hmm. I'm not good at playing sports. I'm a, I talk it well, but I can't. I, I mean, I've never been successful. I don't run well. If I start running, my knees pain me. I was on the football team, but I was the bench warmer, a permanent fixture on the bench until I got fed up and leave. So I can't play no sport good, except I play domino as well. But otherwise, so I, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. Good. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So you're not a physical person, all right. So... All right. What's your favorite sport? Football. Football. All yes. Right. And all then right. basketball, cricket. I love them. You know, same the West Indies, you know, that going, I still get up yesterday morning from after four watching them. Okay. Okay. I was listening to your track and field. No track and field? I'm not a big fan. I watch it when Olympics come. Uh -huh. <laughs> Our world championship. But I wouldn't. And funny enough, even though I'm a football fan, I'll watch football like every week. I'll watch a game every week. I don't think I would want to go into a stadium. I don't do well with large crowds. Oh. So and 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 if I go there, I know I'm gonna engage and chatting with somebody. And when the goal score, I'm gonna see it. So it better might as well as stay in front of the TV <laughs> where I can I can play replay. Can I tell you it's a different feel though? It's a different feel yes. when you go to the stadium. They have, um, when the Women's World Cup was being played some years ago, mm -hmm. um, they actually had a few matches here in Edmonton. We have the Commonwealth Stadium. And I, I got to go. It was my first time. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you? All of a sudden, I'm a big football fan. Big football. Well, World <laughs> Cup is coming this side of the globe. The next mm -hmm. World Cup. So I'll, 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 I'll be watching. I'll be watching games. I won one in a lifetime. Yes, that's it too, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So we are getting to know Sir Nash a little bit more. So my final question to you today, Sir Nash, is what is your favorite food? Ooh. Well, many people don't know, but I'm a very good cook. Okay. Yes. And so I will try. I'm very experimental. I'm a scientist. I'll try different things within it. But I like anything that that has to do with fish and curry. Anything curry, anything in fish, I'll eat it. Okay. All right. You're a seafood person. Yes. Love that. And I love the curry goat, but I kind of watching it because I don't want to set up the cholesterol, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, folks, you heard it here. You heard it here. So we've gotten some insights on the man himself. Des Moines, Nash, and I'm I'm just looking at the um the the comments here, and um persons have been commenting on Facebook and on YouTube, and I'm just just loving it. I'm just watching the views, and I'm happy that you're all here with us today, and you've gotten some nuggets 
from um, the conversation that we've had with Sir Nash this morning. And you can recognize that one, failure is not final. Failure is not final. All right, I'm pushing that one. Failure is not final. And we've been talking about uh, balancing on purpose. You know, there's one main question that I didn't ask you. And I should, and I'm going to ask it because I was about to wrap up and I realized that I didn't ask you this question. Mm -hmm. You see How it. do you balance everything? This is the question, right? How do you balance everything? How do you keep saying with everything that you do and everything that you have going on? How do you balance it? I am doing better. So it's it, as I become more mature, I realize that some things are not needed. And you just have to, you can't. And, and the, the, the greatest way to balance is putting your no, line up your no's and your yes. I've always said a wrong yes is worse than a no. And I've learned to, I'm learning to say, no, I can't. And, and I'm learning to prioritize me in all of this, not to allow people to use me, to abuse me, um, working on my health, ensuring that when I show up, I'm healthy. So I'm exercising. I, I, and all of that sort of stuff and ensuring that because I think it's Proverbs 11 verse 1 a false balance is an abomination to the Lord to ensure that spiritually, emotionally, mentally physically and all allies I'm well financially all of this I'm well so it's just doing it daily little by little prioritizing what is needful and if it's not needful well you can stay and that includes Sometimes people, you know, we can't we can get people out of our space, but adversity does it for us. Yes, that one is true. That <laughs> one is true. That one is true. All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for the nuggets. Thank you so much for the insights. And I'm going to give you about two minutes to just give your final, your final talk to our audience this morning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I want to say thank you, um, Lady Odette, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I want to say that where I'm at today, it, has, it is a clear work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to express thanks to all the people, I mean, all the people he has put in my life, from a little child, starting at my parents, to all the teachers, to all the community folks, to all the, the good the persons he has used as enable and purpose um, destiny helpers and all of the different terms we use but everybody who have contributed I am a composite of people's kind work and care and and, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a product of the community that I'm from and the wider communities that have been in school, college, name it so I want to say thanks to everybody really appreciate what you have done for me and that's put me into a place now where I cannot not help people and, and, and as a result of that, I've put things in place that I have been helping people silently, especially students in universities for a while. I don't advertise it because it's a, I believe it's a silent work. Um, and just to say that, um, you know, I want to reiterate, I've never been a perfect person. And, I, and, 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 and the fact is that God still makes me perfect. He considers me perfect. He makes me whole. He declares me righteous. And he's committed to finish what he has started in my life. And I hold true to the words of God and what he's doing in my life. And I trust him that he is getting the job done. And I have no doubt he'll finish it in a flourishing manner. Um, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sir Nash, Minister Nash, J.P. Nash, Arthur <laughs> Nash, motivational speaker Nash, Daddy Nash. God bless you. It is. It it has been a wonderful, wonderful um one oh one three minutes that we've been here, and I've gotten some good insights and some good nuggets. You know, I just love um just your o overall view on where you are and what God has been doing in your life and, and how you are moving forward. So to all our listeners from across the nations of the world that have 
joined us this morning, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're still listening to us on the radio, I want to thank you for staying the course this morning. I'm your host, Odette Thompson, and you're listening to The Morning Flow with the segment Balancing on Purpose. This morning we spoke to the Des Moines Nash out of the Cayman Islands, and I pray that you got some insights. I pray that you got some nuggets to move forward. I see you, Pastor Reeves. God bless you, sir, for logging on. And um, Olivine, God bless you. God bless you, Janice. God bless you to all our listeners, to all our viewers. God bless you richly. And we're going to be closing out this segment and we're going to hop on to the radio. So for those of you who have not yet downloaded the radio app, it's HGG Radio. You can go onto your Apple Store or your Google Store, download HGG Radio, and you will be able to listen to gospel 24 hours a day. I am on Mondays to Fridays, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Mountain Standard Time. It has indeed been a blessing, and I truly appreciate you all. So again, we're going to be signing off from Facebook. We're going to be signing off from YouTube. God bless you all richly. And I look forward to what God is about to do in your life, Sir Nash. I'm looking forward to the new book. Uh, but before the new book, I will be buying the present one. Thank you so very much. Have a good day to you and your listeners. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. They wrote me off. They thought I would die. They tried to bury me while I was alive. They never know purpose. Cannot die. They thought I was hopeless. But I survived. Yes, I want to remind someone that doesn't matter what they say, doesn't matter what they do, it is about what God is doing in your life. Purpose cannot die. And we just wrapped up our segment, Balancing on Purpose, and we were speaking to Sir Demoy Nash out of the Cayman Islands. And I want to say God bless you all richly. We're going to hop on to the radio seg segment. We're going to be closing out our Facebook feed. We're going to be closing out our YouTube feed. God bless you all richly. And as we continue to have purpose unfold in our lives. <laughs>